so it's not going to be a lot of action, but from what I've seen of it so far, I like it. And I hope you guys will too. Air Rogers, Expediac. City Hall confirms rumors of Jack Boyd's resignation. Why can I not say that word? Mark War II to be shown in Freeburg the day before the worldwide premiere by the mayor's personal store. Get to work! My jalopy! There we go. When I was a kid, my father sometimes told me at bedtime that if I closed my eyes and didn't open them for a long time, all the demons would blow away. Yesterday I turned 60, but I still take his advice. Not because I'm sentimental or want to keep the memory of my father alive. I just can't think of a better solution. To get away from all the demons that haunt Freeburg, I'd need to wear a blindfold 24-7. Plus, it's a good idea to act blind when talking to reporters. At least, that's what my colleagues say. They're afraid of press conferences. But for me, it's more like a confessional. No matter what lies you tell, you're privately thinking the honest answers. It helps me remember who I am. The fact that I'll be reading all about it in the papers tomorrow is a small price to pay. Call it penance for the preacher. Steps. This is the first time I'm afraid of those answers my mind has given me. Not because I'm mad I'm losing my job. Though it's true, I'm mad as hell. Not because I subconsciously blame everyone else. Though I damn sure do blame them. And don't even ask me what my next move is. I can't imagine. But even that doesn't scare me. The worst thing is... I know I'm gonna have to do something, and I'll be damned if I know how far I'll go. I may have a lot of vices, but predictability isn't one of them. I learned a long time ago how to drive away the swarming demons. But what do you do when they're trying to rip your soul from your skin? Shutting my eyes tight as I can. The best solution remains the same. Play blind. I just hope the reporters think I was blinded by the camera flash. Good morning. Yesterday the mayor's office officially announced your resignation. Did this come as a surprise or did you know about it? Uh... Go by surprise. I thought I'd be working as a policeman for another five to ten years. I just want to serve the city. I was very surprised, of course. Do you already know the name of your successor? No. Uh, I think it'll be Department of Veterans. It will most likely be one of my current employees. After the recent corruption scandal, your deputy Francis Kendrick said he was looking forward to resigning. The mayor offered him your position. Would that change his mind? It's hard to say, but I can't think of a more deserving candidate than Captain Kendrick. Although Kendrick was acquitted, many still believe that the police are cooperating with the Mafia. Do you have anything to say about this? The short-term agreement with the Mafia helps us solve or prevent a crime. Of course, we try to make the best of it. I don't think I should have said that. <laughs> Do you think your personal relationship with the mayor could be the reason behind your retirement? Uh... That's just not possible. Mayor Rogers is too professional and he makes his decisions carefully. No place in our jobs for hard feelings. Thank you. How's the back today, Mr. Boyd? Same as usual. How did the press conference go? You can read about it in the newspapers tomorrow. Don't let anyone in. Even Mr. Kendrick? Especially Mr. Kendrick.
<sighs> as soon as I heard the door creak, I knew what face I'd see. When I tell Emma not to let anyone in, there's only one man it could be. Rude, arrogant, no warning. That's Mayor Rogers in a nutshell. White summer shoes, white socks, white shorts, white polo shirt, and the white smile of a hungry shark. Mayor Rogers enters every room like he owns the place. Even the floorboards under his feet sound like they're creaking an apology. He never shied away from the odd corruption scheme. It's like the devil walks behind him. In the movies, the villains controlling the city play golf with the judges. Rogers plays tennis with them instead. That's about the only difference. Jack, I was hoping to catch you after the press conference. You, uh, you ran away so quick. There's no smoking at City Hall. No reason for me to hang around. Well, this morning I signed a ban on smoking in all public buildings. Soon you won't be able to smoke here either. <laughs> Soon enough I won't be here at all. If that's what I wanted to talk to you about. The people of this city like you, Jack. The police chief of all people. <laughs> don't, uh, don't betray that, Jack. Don't get wrapped up in any schemes. Sit nice and quiet for the next 180 days, and, uh, and you'll be remembered as a hero. That's the only thing that you still have left. Be the hero. Fuck you, Then how am I supposed to scrape together a retirement fund? You had a million chances to secure a luxury pension. One that even I would have envied, although I've never set aside any money for myself. I'm not planning to retire anytime soon. One hundred and eighty days of quiet, Jack. That's all I need. I don't have any problems with you, and you won't have any problems with me. I have a new assistant, Troy Starr. If you have something to tell me, call him. But try not to bother him. He's a, he's a busy man. <laughs> I'll do my best. And quit smoking up the office. One of my friends will be using it soon. Well, he's busy already. Oh, I'm sorry, babe. Only the mayor has this number. Mr. Mayor? Yeah, is this Troy Star? Yes. Go fuck yourself, Troy Star. <laughs> Head of Culture Department owns Villa in Italy. Jeff Boyd, Francis Kendrick is a decent man. Jeff Boyd confirms police cooperation with the Mafia. I did no such thing. <laughs> Cops don't use the police station cafeteria anymore. There's some kind of stigma against sitting shoulder to shoulder with your partners. Everybody just takes snacks from the machines or grabs a meal and hammers it down in the corner like a vulture on a corpse. The main thing? Don't look into anyone's eyes. Could be construed as an invitation to sit together. The only people eaten here are ghosts. My deputy, Francis Kendrick, he recently became one of those ghosts. The subject of one of the most devastating corruption scandals in the history of Freeburg. No evidence to support the accusations, but everyone knows Kendrick's days are numbered. I need that file I asked for. Needs to be ready tonight. Francis didn't say anything, but I understood. Ghosts aren't supposed to talk. Besides, I got a feeling he was already finished.
start the day. Why do I get phone calls when I'm streaming? Separate him and our security guard is after you during the night. Dancy, you go ahead. Four twelve A in progress. That surprise us and Junior just attacking an elderly music musician and then run away with his guitar and his money. Send my top cop on it. Looks like we have a situation. Your car ops aren't sure how to proceed, they might contact you and ask you to handle the situation. Try to deal with whatever comes up, but don't waste all your time on this stuff. You have plenty of other problems on your plate. Vehicle in question is parked right outside the brown road. Sounds are moaning and loud. Laughter can be heard because of the Uh, go this one. No! What? Oh, 
house now, no! What the fuck? Thunder escaped, officer unharmed. What the fuck, people? Should I be sending two? First day on the job, somebody died. God damn it. What phone? What could you possibly want? Oh. Thunder escaped, officer unharmed. God damn. I think I should start sending two people. Because this is getting ridiculous. End the day. That was horrible. Somebody died on my first day. Used to be when I asked Kendrick to stay late at the office, he liked to grumble and crack wise. Nowadays, he doesn't have the strength for it. Slumped shoulders, blank stare, wrinkled skin. The past few weeks, I don't hardly recognize my old friend. In his younger years, he reminded me of a gallant royal officer in an old Kipling story. Kendrick isn't just crumbling under the weight of the public pressure but from the shame of it all. Internal Affairs raided the library he inherited from his grandfather, hoping they'd find buckets of cash stashed in the pages. Heard about the look on his face, the fearless policeman standing helpless in horror. I've known Francis for 30 years. The past 20 years, he's played loose with the law. And I know that at a certain point, every stolen dollar brings more misery than anything else. Probably sounds crazy, but I sympathize with the guy. What can I do? Your friends are your friends, and these are the waters we swim in. Called all of the people on that list today. Now they know you're in business. So you could get a call from any of them. You don't need to worry about any of them. I've cleared them all. And what kind of business are we talking here? It's nothing too serious, just like you asked. Should be just a few small favors. Payments will vary depending on the situation and who you're dealing with. How much are you looking to earn? Half a million. Half wow. a million? Why not a whole million? Because everybody wants to take a million. Figured I'd try something different. Half a million in 180 days? Well, you could earn it all above board if you netted all the big fish and hit all your bonuses. Never knew you for a fisherman. Well, you never got into my business, and I'm not trying to get into yours. But be careful about bringing in any other cops. Sooner or later, they'll put the finger on you. And, and one more thing, Jack. I remember what you said, but I should probably add one more name to that list. Christopher Sand. Sand. Christopher G. Sand. Everyone knows the name, but few could tell you who he is. The old man stays away from the spotlight. Always wears old-fashioned jeans and knitted sweaters. Gives to charity. Rarely attends social events. An avid hunter, I hear. Even dabbles in poetry. You'd never guess he's the head of the oldest and most powerful gang in the city. Goes back as far as his great-grandfather. And Sand is strict about following the old rules. He rarely involves himself in commonplace murders and robberies. Hardly needs to intimidate anyone to get his point across. The people who work for him each have their sphere. They provide protection where needed, even work with the authorities when they want to make a deal. Meanwhile, Sand pulls the strings without getting his hands dirty. People sometimes mistake his quiet approach. A couple years ago, an arms dealer decided to expand its business without asking permission, and his whole family paid the price. In four weeks, Sand killed 31 people, old men, women, even a few teenagers. And Sand's people made sure every paper reported it. Damn. 
Frank, I don't want to hear you say that name again. Jack. Please, listen to me. I'm in with these guys. We agreed, Frank. That's not the kind of business I'm into. I don't go there. Never have, never will. Pissed. Checkpoint. Woo! Day three. I actually have 180 days to get to. Holy crap. Francis Kendrick announces retirement date. Construction of Cinema Museum postponed again. Legendary singer Gennaro Crespo comes to Freebird. <laughs> Jalapio show. Okay. I don't know why I promoted them, but I did. <laughs> Freeburg isn't one of the cities where you listen to what they say or nothing at all. You can always select any song from your collection and play it any time, just like in your life. Well, the life of your grandmother. Hey! This one. Scratching offensive Logan's on his new car. Yeah. Really, dude. Unharmed. Can you people do anything? Jesus Christ. Waitress named Mila reports that she just served a chicken Eddie and a Diet Coke to a dangerous criminal who's seen on television this morning. The couple is sitting at the window eating a burger. Be very careful, guys. Vendor's 
escape. I'll do some harm. You people can't do shit. Nobody got murdered. Can I please storm? That'd be lovely. Oh God. Clowns selling crack? What? God damn it. Naked man carrying canister of gasoline is starting to set himself on fire unless his favorite chewing gum becomes popular again. I have loonies in this town. Loonies! That day, not so bad. Alright. Not good, but not bad. <laughs> Alright, let's read some papers. Robespierre to reveal his identity when the time is right. Feminist organization denied official registration. Enemies using feminists to destroy Primer. <laughs> what? How do you do that? <laughs> Come on, knock on my door. Whenever I'm alone at home and there's a knock at the door, I always hope it'll be my wife, Laura. She's always forgetting her keys. Hello, my name is Steve, and you're Jack Boyd, is that right? <laughs> to get to my front door, the Bible boys walked about a mile from the local bus stop jumping over mud puddles and skirting a couple of landfills. Laura doesn't go in for religion either, but according to her, these brave lunatics with their fake smiles deserve at least a minute of attention. She patiently listens to them, asks them questions, regales them with pastries, and never once dropping a hint of condescension. When I watch her do it, I've got to admit it gets me. I'd have hugged those boys, sat with them on the porch and lit up a cigar. But a month after Laura left, all I could do was quietly ask them not to bother me. Today I'm a little rougher still. Shut the door on his nose this time. Another couple weeks at this rate and I'll be greeting anyone who comes close with my service pistol pointed towards the sky, ready to fire my warning shots. In my life, even the basic stuff never goes like it's supposed to. Normally, when a wife is going to leave home, she'll make a scene, or at least sit everyone down for a serious conversation. But Laura just disappeared. The children in the stories always stand on the side of the mother, but all three of our sons supported me. The in-laws always blame the husband for making their daughter unhappy. But now Sally, Laura's mother, well, we sort of have a pact. The fellow Laura ran off with is young enough to be her son. I hear he's 30 years old. Of all the possible Ew. information a man can know about his wife's lover, I get hit with that. Fortunately, Laura's mother doesn't like the way it sounds either. Sally figures this guy just thought he'd have some fun with a mature woman, but he'll be back chasing college girls before the year is out. So we have an agreement. 
Sally's gonna track down Laura and try to reason with her, and we'll arrange a meeting. Meanwhile, I'm supposed to not do anything stupid, which of course means anything at all. It's a crazy situation. I'm the police chief, and the person I'm trusting to find my wife is an old woman armed with a phone book. But I can't afford to lose Sally as an ally. So for the moment, I had to swallow my pride. Hello. Mrs. Markham, this is Boyd. Oh, is there any news? That's what I wanted to ask you. Have you found anything? An address? Phone number? Have you spoken to her? Don't worry, Jack. I've narrowed the range to two suspects, or whatever you like to say at your police building. At my police building, we find people faster than a funny old woman chirping on the phone with my wife's girlfriends. Oh, you're an old man, Jack. Come to your senses. They'd give us straight odds on the street. But I've got more energy, Jack. Maybe you think I'm a foolish old woman, but I go to my book club, argue with the girls about Byron, and it gives me energy. I talk to my dogs, and it gives me energy. And you have nothing, Jack. You don't even have a hobby. You got no passion. It's why Laura left you. Let's not go back into that, Sally. Find my wife, and we can discuss my hobbies later. I'm waiting for your call, and my patience is running thin. Laura, if you've you stopped loving me, I'll let you go. I can't expect the impossible from you. Just don't let me die out here, okay? Okay, my neighbor died, and his wife asked me to help at the funeral arrangement. Can I take the debt? Yes. All right. Two twelve in progress. Racist gang has recently made some trouble in the city. They're capturing black townspeople and beating them to death. They recently sent a message to a local radio station promising to kill all How's the black How's it going, doctors. Rose? Good, how's it going with you? Firemen and police. We don't need any more dead police, especially not mere months before the election. Racists are gaining more and more followers, and even some of our students are seeing their fire already by throwing the next two days due to mounting racial tension. I don't want to do that. Let's okay. All right, Yeesh, I'll try to be quiet so I don't interrupt, haha. -ha. You don't have to be quiet. I just got alarmed. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh god. And people like that. Okay. I don't want to fire all my black cops. I don't want them to die either. What do I do? 113B in progress. A gas station surveillance camera reported a car that's on the stolen vehicles list. I think you guys can do this. Don't die. Fire and they can get other jobs. True. What is this? I did not know I had to do this. I broke it. Two twelve complete.
Yay, I did it. Miss something? No? Okay, good. 12, 10 in progress. Alright, Corey Ramsey, mother of several children, has expressed her concerns about a suspicious man wearing bifocals seated on a bench beside a playground. He's been watching his children for over an hour and has taken several photographs of him. Oh, fuck you, dude! Looks Get like out of there! We have a situation here. Interview. Oh god, no! Oh god. I did a bad. I did a bad. I did a very bad. <laughs> what if he's just taking pics? That's still creepy. You don't take pictures of other people's children unless they know about it. Whew. All right. Mr. Boyd, I'm opening Freeburg's first martial arts club, and for my first exhibition, I want to hold a sparring match where one of our my students takes on your toughest cop. My toughest cop, Kochi. We'll send her. I got three new flames. Okay, let's see. They get it wrong enough time, but a good cop can separate facts from fiction that they know how to look at these materials. The more professional detectives working on an investigation, the better they're instincts. Okay. Tell me nothing, do they? What's this? Wait, what? Three eleven A in progress. Bartender reports that a couple of dancers started fighting over tips and a cat fight broke out right on me. <laughs> then the three women, the cat fight. Do they not have security? Ha ha geez. Apparently not. This city is fully of woosies. <laughs> Can I not place this anywhere? Alright, whatever. 311A in progress. Bartender reported that a fight has broken out between a patron and a bar's bouncer. Man apparently drunk climbed on the stage of local singers performing and tried to sing a duet with her. <laughs> we'll send the old lady. And we'll send her out. Chief, I just felt nailed the jab a couple of times, but he's too fast for me and one on points. I don't really understand all the rules, so I can't keep track of points very well, but he was alright. He even showed me a few tricks after the match. I got carried away a little and pulled my back. I think I could take the day off. Ooh, 
we're done for the day. Yay! Just gotta get all my stuff in the back. On the stage are true strippers going at it, and it's gone beyond arguing. She's supposed to be your toughest. Ha ha! Can I take a day off? Bouncer's fast asleep, but clearly too weak to handle. Strippers continue fighting. Um. Three eleven A complete. Yay! I did it. <laughs> Three eleven A complete. Center escape. Officers unharmed. Cool. Strippers apprehended. Gotta get them strippers. Alright, retired police officer Thomas Blaine shoots a pregnant woman. Officer Blaine explains I thought she was a suicide bomber. Mayor Rogers City has no problem with racists. Um, pretty sure we just figured out they do, but sure, why not? Why would a man need a barn to store all the stuff you can't bring home? About 30 years ago, back when I was young and interested in farming, I carried all kinds of junk home. After a day in the field, I'd come home with buckets, shovels, dirty boots and clothes, and instantly transform the living room. But even back then, there's something I always kept in the barn. Is it my other jalopy? Drugs! I stopped keeping my pills inside the house because every time I was about to take a triple, someone would knock on my bedroom door. Now they're knocking on my barn door. Well, fine. It's not every day that someone comes to visit your barn. In all the years we worked together, Kendrick never came to visit the house. We drank at bars, went fishing, went to the mountains, even chased off some poachers one time. But he never came for dinner with the family. We never watched football over here. And now he's brought his friends to visit my barn. I always try to look unsurprised, like it's an everyday thing to get visitors at the old barn. Especially guests with their own personal bodyguards. But Kendrick is sharp enough to see he's caught me with my pants on backwards. Sorry for the surprise, Jack. We saw you from the car. Figured we'd find you in here. I'm going in for a minute, fellas. These guys will wait outside. How long you been dating the lover boys? They're sans people, Jack. Yeah. So now you're appearing in public with members of the Mafia? Jack, I'm leaving tonight. More like fleeing. Jenny and I are taking the girls and making a run for it. Probably won't be seeing each other again. I've got new documents, a new name, a new life, everything new. The papers say you're still working your last week for the department. I've got to get out today. I won't be getting another chance. Don't know if you noticed, but the whole city is against me. You told your Mafia friends about your plans. Jackie, if I don't fix everything with them in the next few hours, they're going to kill me. And not just me, my family, my relatives, God, Jack, I don't know who else. They found out that I was planning to run, and they demanded that we close our contract today. Your contract, Frank? Really? Is that how you talk now? Maybe you should call in the lawyers to straighten all this out. Now is not the time, Jack, please. I have a commitment to them until the end of the year. They need an inside line at police headquarters. I can't just give them back the money. That's not how the Mafia works. If I can't find someone I can trust tonight, I'm dead. You know me, Jack. I wouldn't ask you if I wasn't afraid they'd cut my daughters to pieces before sunrise. He's the damn fool who puts his daughters in the crosshairs in the first place. Anyone in my place would have dressed him down good. 
but I didn't want to pile it on. Fate's already got this guy's soul in the grinder. Give All right, phone he daughters. And tell him it's done. <laughs> don't call me. Don't come to work today. I don't want to see or hear from you again. Time for you to go. Jack. I... Get the fuck out of my nice cozy barn, Frank. At the time, I was trying not to think about what just happened. It was almost too much to take in. I'm probably the most popular police chief in the history of the city, and I have to admit, I've thought about that more than once, sometimes with a little pride, even. In one of the features they wrote about me in the papers, they said it pretty plain. He catches the criminals. Believe me, high praise like that is unheard of in Freeburg, especially for a cop. And here I am, the person who catches criminals, and I've agreed to help the Mafia, or I'll come home to a bag stuffed with my kids' body parts. Right before the last hammer falls. Hey, remember that cop who caught criminals? It turns out he was a Mafia bitch. And all for the sake of a greedy, corrupt cop who should have fled the country years ago. That sound right to you? <laughs> well, I can't have her drunk on the job. But I think I'm going to end right here, actually. Uh, I need to eat, and I'll probably be back on in a little bit for some more of this. So if you'd like to join me then, you're more than welcome to. This is Rose, signing off.